Today on this 2009 Chevrolet HHR, you'll be having a look at and being shown how to install the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-152. We will also be using a Roadmaster 6-wire trailer connector, part number RM-910030-7. Here's what our diode wiring kit looks like installed. What this is going to allow us to do is safely and legally flat tow our vehicle behind our motorhome without having to worry about using any magnetic tow lights. This will use the existing light bulbs in our vehicle with very little modification required. You're already using what you have there. And what the diodes are going to do is protect our vehicle's expensive lighting circuit. So when we're having the signal being applied from the motorhome, we don't have to worry about that voltage being backfed into our computer, possibly damaging it. All you have to do in order to get your car set up is simply make one electrical connection at the front with your umbilical cord, and then you don't have to worry about doing anything else. The motorhome's turn signals, brake lights, and taillights will thus treat your HHR like a trailer, and all the factory light bulbs will work properly. When you're unhooking and you wanna drive about town once you're at your destination, your vehicle's factory lights work without a problem. You don't do anything else. Once you're unplugged, the factory lights take over. And now that we've gone over some features of our Roadmaster High Power Diode Wiring Kit, we'll show you how to get it installed. Okay, when we had our fascia off, when we installed our base plate, we ran our wires inside the wire loom, so they're hidden behind our fascia opening, so you don't have to worry about seeing color wires. And we have it secured to a zip tie right now to the bracket for our six pole connector on our base plate. This way it wouldn't fall out when we reinstall the fascia. It goes behind our base plate, secured up with a couple zip ties. Comes behind this panel here. You can see it right there in the loom underneath the air conditioning lines. It goes behind this air dam. And then it comes up. We have it secured out of the way. It goes around our fuse box here and then goes down against our firewall. We have our four flat wire right here. We're going to separate all four of our wires so we have individual wires to work with. With those separated, we can now strip back some insulation from all four wires. We'll take the dust cover off of our six-way connector. We'll take the small end, slide it over our wires, and just push it back out of the way. Okay, now on the back side of our connector, we have six terminals. We'll do the one that's marked GD. That's our ground. We'll loosen the set screw with a small Phillips screwdriver. This will get our white wire. Our white wire is the ground wire. We'll tighten the set screw back down. Make sure our wire's not going to pull out. We'll do the one marked TM next. That's for your tail lights and marker lights. And that'll get our brown wire. We'll do LT next. That's for our left turn signal. Also our left brake light. That gets our yellow wire. We'll do our right turn signal next. And that's also our right brake light. And that goes to the terminal RT and our green wire will go to that terminal. And here's what it looks like with all of them connected. Okay, now what I like to do is take some dielectric grease, which we have available on our website, and we'll flood the back side of our connector. This will prevent any corrosion from possibly occurring or shorts if any moisture were to get inside. Now, we'll slide the cover back until it hits the ridge on the connector and we'll tape it in place up to our wire loom with some electrical tape. By taping up on our wires this far, this should prevent the possibility of moisture getting inside. We'll now push it into the bracket on our base plate. And we'll secure it in place with some screws and nuts. We'll hold the nut still with a wrench. 
and we'll tighten the screw up with a screwdriver. Okay, with those screws tight, we now have an easily accessible and very secure mount for our electrical connection to our RV. Now, when our wire is dropped from behind our engine bay, it comes down against our firewall here. We have it secured to the brackets for our brake and fuel lines towards the rear of the vehicle. Have it secured to our parking brake cable on the driver's side, which is fine. It's not gonna move. Got it secured here to a bracket for our brake and fuel lines again, right in front of a rear subframe. Now, since we're starting to get close to the exhaust, I put inside some of the wire loom that comes with it to help better protect it and isolate it from the heat. Have it secured to the bracket where the flange is, where our brake hose meets the metal brake line on the driver's side rear wheel. Go up over our exhaust, has a heat shield on the exhaust here, so it will help protect it from the heat some. Have it secured with a zip tie to the exhaust hanger as far away from the exhaust as possible. We start going towards the center of the vehicle right in front of the spare tire well. We have it secured up to a wiring harness. Now in order to get this inside the vehicle, we're going to have to drill a hole inside the spare tire well and install a grommet. Before we do that, you wanna make sure there's nothing in the spare tire well. We'll start clearing out our cargo panels. We'll undo the nut that holds our tray in place. And we'll take out our spare tire. We can leave the jack in place that won't be in the way. Now I'm going to cut a square out in our insulation in our trunk so we have access to the metal. Use a utility knife to do this. In the middle of our square, we'll drill a pilot hole. Now we'll enlarge this hole to half inch using a step bit. With our hole enlarged the proper size now, we'll take a snap in place grommet and install a grommet. So our wires will have a clean, smooth surface to pass through and they won't get damaged. Now we're underneath, we'll take our wires and push them into the grommet. We'll grab it, we'll pull it the rest of the way in. Put our wires all the way through, we'll now separate all four of them like we did at the front. All right, now we need to find a place to attach our ground wire to. Conveniently, our battery's right in the trunk. This black wire here is our ground cable. It goes from the battery to this bolt here, and this provides the ground for the entire car. So if it's good enough to start the car, it'll be good, be good enough for our lights. We'll move this bolt, 13 millimeter. We'll make sure our ring terminal that comes with the kit will fit over the bolt, and it does. Make sure we need enough slack in it for our spare tire to rest on top of it without pulling it. Cut off the excess. Strip back some insulation. Place our ring terminal onto the wire. Crimp it down. Place our bolt through it. And reinstall the bolt. Now we need to gain access to our tail light connectors. We'll find those behind these panels on each side. There's a slot, you can stick in a flathead screwdriver, pop it back, and it'll come out. We'll do that for both sides. All right, behind the cover, we find our two connectors. The bottom one's a reverse light. We don't need to worry about that one. The top one is our tail light and brake light bulb. That's the one we're making our connections with. There's a tab right here. You pull it back, then pull the connector back, it disconnects. We can bring it outside to work with. Now our connector is covered, some wire loom. We'll peel back the tape, slide our wires out of it, and cut off the loom. Okay, now I have a test light. It's grounded to the negative terminal on our battery. I turned our headlights on. We're gonna find out which wire is for our tail light signal. That's the middle terminal, which is for our brown wire. Oddly enough, our tail lights 
are also a brown wire from our towed vehicle lighting system. So we'll match up the brown wire to the brown wire. So our brown wire, we just route it over to our driver's side. We stuck our hand through the panel here, lifted up on it a little bit, stuck it through, and pulled it out the opening so we have wire to work with. We'll measure off how much we're gonna need. Cut off the excess, but we'll hang on to it because we'll need it here in a second. Now we'll take our brown wire here on our vehicle's wiring harness, and we'll cut it right in the middle. Okay, we'll strip back the insulation from our vehicle's wiring harness. Now we'll take the brown wire that we added, strip back the insulation from it, and our leftover brown wire, we'll strip back the insulation from one end. We'll twist those two together. If you need to get more brown wire, we have some available on our website as part number 16-1-1. It's 16 gauge wire, it's sold by the foot. So however many extra feet of wire you need, order that many as a quantity. Okay, there are two wires twisted together from our towed vehicle wiring harness. We'll put those into our yellow spade connector and crimp that down. Place that connector onto one of the input sides of our diode pack. On our wiring for the factory connector, we'll place on blue spade connectors on both ends of the wire that we cut. The side closest to the connector will go towards the output side of our diode pack, and the other one will go towards the input side. It doesn't matter which input, just one of them. We routed our yellow wire the same way as we did the brown wire. Cut off our excess, strip off some insulation, we'll crimp on a blue connector. At this point all we have left is blue connectors. Now we have our left turn signal turned on and we'll test to make sure which wire goes to our connector. And it's the yellow wire, so we'll make our connection to the yellow wire with our yellow wire. We'll cut our yellow wire in the middle. Strip back the insulation. Put our connectors on. Take a new diode pack. Again, the connector side goes towards the output, the other side went to the input, and then our towed vehicle wiring goes towards the other input. Okay, now we can plug our connector back into the tail light on the driver's side. Once it clicks in place, we know we're good. Okay, we routed our green wire the same way just towards our passenger side, not towards the driver's side. Our brown wire that we attached to the yellow connector on the driver's side, we routed across the panel that connects the two sides of the vehicle and up. It goes right over our battery. It's easy to get to. You can easily get your hands down there to route it. Okay, we'll unplug our passenger side taillight bulb the same way as we did the driver's side. We have our headlights turned on again, so we'll test which wires for our taillight on our passenger side. It's our brown wire again. We'll turn our headlights off now. Okay, now we'll cut our brown wire in the middle. Strip back some insulation from both ends. Slide our connectors under our wires, crimp them down. I'll measure off how much of a brown wire we'll need, cut off the excess, strip it back, place the connector on, crimp it. Okay, we'll make our connections now. On all of our diode packs, the output side always goes towards the connector. The other side goes to our input. It doesn't matter which one. Then we plug the tow vehicle wiring harness in. Okay, our turn signal's on, we'll test. So it's a green wire. So our green wire will be connected to our green wire. You very rarely will see that all the wire colors match up to your vehicle wiring. Now we'll cut our green wire in the middle. 
and strip out the insulation. Crimp the connectors on the wires. Now we'll take our new diode pack. The side closest to the connector will go towards the output side of our diode pack, and the other one will go towards the input side. It doesn't matter which input, just one of them. Measure off how much of our green wire we'll need, making sure we still have slack. Strip back some insulation from the wire. We'll place on our connector. Crimp it down. And we'll plug that into the last input side of our diode pack. Okay, now we'll plug our tail light back in. Now we'll reinstall over panels. Put our spare tire back in. Okay, we're gonna test our wiring by using a Toe Doctor trailer tester. You can also hook up to your RV to make sure your wiring is working properly. But we're using this because if we had a wiring problem on our RV, we wouldn't be able to tell if our vehicle's lights are working properly. So we have our seven way connected on this end with our six way to the front of the vehicle. So we'll start by turning on our tail lights to make sure they're working. Now we'll do our left brake light, which is also our left turn signal. Now we'll do the right. So with that done, we know all of our lights are working properly and we're ready to hit the road. And that completes your look at and being shown how to install the Roadmaster Universal High Power Diode Wiring Kit, part number RM-152 on this 2009 Chevrolet HHR.